I don't have any major races planned for December, so I'm making this video now as a roundup and celebration of the things I have achieved this year. Right, we're recording. I've just realized I forgot my towel. So today's challenge is I'm gonna try and climb out to Zwift. Well, I'm gonna climb it, there's no try about it. I've done it twice now in a PB attempt and I've also done it um, three times on top of that, so five in total, of which twice I had to call it because it was part of my four horsemen attempt. Last week, I made a video about hitting my 2023 New Year's resolution of a sub 30 minute park run. Because of my aim for the stars mentality, I achieved an official park run result of, are you ready for this? 29 minutes and 59 seconds. You couldn't get any closer. I ran a sub 30 minute park run for the first time in my life. I've now had a few people comment on how great it is to see how happy I am with the result at the end of the video. It still makes me happy saying this now. Running a sub 30 minute park run I know is not fast, but it is above the national park run average of 32 minutes. And for someone who only a few years ago couldn't run a bath, let alone a park run, of course I was over the moon. I was also thrilled I did it with only four weeks left of 2023 and it made for a great video. Achieving a personal best has always been a goal of mine. Relentless forward progress means continual incremental wins, small 1% gains that build up to a bigger picture. You must never lose sight of the bigger picture. When your legs are screaming at you to stop, it's easy to forget why you're doing this. Never lose sight of the bigger picture. I don't know if you've ever heard of Dave Browsford, but the governing body for professional cycling in Great Britain hired him to fix British cycling and he introduced a new 1% rule. At the time, professional cyclists in Great Britain had endured nearly 100 years of mediocrity. In fact, the performance of Great British riders had been so underwhelmingly bad that one of the top bike manufacturers in Europe refused to sell bikes to the team because they were afraid that it would hurt their sales. So Dave Browsford called his new strategy the aggregation of marginal gains, which was the philosophy of searching for tiny marginal improvements in everything you do. The whole principle came from the idea that if you broke down everything you could think of and then improve it by 1%, you will get a significant increase when you put them all together. So it'll make for a better, bigger picture. I was asked recently in a video comment, what triggered my radical change back in 2018? Radical change being the commenter's words, not mine. This is probably a subject for a whole other video. However, in a nutshell, I was tired of dancing to the beat of another person's drum. Basically, I worked hard to line other people's pockets and my overall well-being and health suffered for my hard work. It was cause and effect. If you want things to change, then you have to make the change yourself. I worked in a very fast paced environment and this didn't afford me time to make the right choices. I also wanted to have more time with my family. My family is everything to me and should always take the priority. So I decided to be the change I wanted to see. When I started out on this journey, I made a series of big changes initially. I left the corporate world and started our own small family business with my partner Tracy right at the start of a major world pandemic. At this moment of national emergency, to stay at home, protect our NHS and save lives. We got through this period and the business survived, ironically, probably making it stronger because of it. And because I'd left this fast paced corporate world, I had the time to now make other changes. I quit alcohol, went completely teetotal. This had a huge impact on my mental well-being and allowed me to stay focused on my new plan. So now I'm five years teetotal, four years vegan and six years as a joint owner with my partner Tracy of a thriving business that allows and affords me the time to make these videos and run Zwift challenges. This is my real PB. When I first made these steps forward, I was worried it would be too much. Now I look at it and I wish I did it sooner. My only regret was waiting until I was 38 to make these changes. I allowed my horrendously poor lifestyle to get me to 190 kg before I decided enough was enough. David Goggins talks about being unbalanced in pursuit of change. And I was trying to tell him, once you become obsessed with something, obsessed, it's okay to be unbalanced for a while. 
It's okay. Don't be all this stuff. People say you got to be balanced. I was certainly unbalanced in my approach to personal change. I made extreme change that most people only think about. Most people struggle to complete the Couch to 5K challenge. 99.9% .9 of all New Year's resolutions are broken before the end of Jan or even reach the goals that they were set. We live in a society where it's okay to quit or give up if it's hard, regardless of the risks of stopping or the lost potential that could have been. If you see value in overcoming that hard challenge, then it's got to be worth the short-term sacrifices to achieve that goal. If that goal is gonna improve your world by even 1%, then surely it's worth the effort. When people ask me what I did to lose so much weight, the answer is large changes initially to ensure my new lifestyle sticks and becomes behavior. I'd say that it takes three months to make something new stick. If you're starting a new job, and you're not sure if you like it, then wait at least three months. If you still don't like it, then leave. But don't do that before three months. If like me, you want to quit alcohol or smoking or eat healthier, then don't give up in the first three months. With anything difficult, the first three months is the opposite of a honeymoon period. It's the period where it feels harder than it should, and you still think the grass is greener or it's not worth the effort. Give it three months. Then when you pass this initial period and you're still going, that's when you focus on the small incremental gains, applying that 1% rule to everything I did on a daily basis, assuming, of course, that what I was doing was beneficial. And I've just started out on what today is my first ever 30 mile walk. And I'm walking from the docks, sorry docks, sorry keys, in London, all the way up to Gravesend in Kent. I've got to be honest, I'm trying very hard not to think about it too much because um, I've got a long way ahead of me. Before I started running, I walked because I was too heavy and unfit to run. And I knew that before I started walking or exercising without first changing my unhealthy eating habits and lifestyle would be pointless. There was no point going out and doing a three or four mile walk when it really, really hurt me. And then coming back and eating a Chinese takeaway, for example, it's just pointless. So I became obsessed with what I ate, when I ate it and how much I ate. That's when I turned vegan, not because being vegan is all automatically healthy because it isn't that's a myth there are plenty of easily accessible vegan sweets donuts and takeaways for example being vegan meant that I had to learn how to shop cook and eat again almost from scratch you can cheat by eating microwave meals but I was serious and having to concentrate on this made me focus on what was right and what was wrong so in my new obsessive unbalanced mind I was making this radical change which I knew I had to make stick when I had fixed it, or at least made a dent in my unhealthy lifestyle choices and diet, giving up alcohol, etc., I had also removed the triggers that made me want to return to these poor choices, such as a stressful working environment that encouraged binge drinking, for example. And the byproduct of this was having more time to focus on family and then fitness and exercise. I didn't want to be the best runner, best trail runner, the best park runner. I just wanted to be the best version of me, a much fitter, lighter, healthier version of me. I set myself some clear and very challenging targets such as the Race to the Stones Ultra Marathon or running the London Marathon back in the day. So far out of my comfort zone that they scared me and directly forced me to train and work hard. Since then my priorities have now moved to focus on getting better at running and cycling, ultimately getting faster. This means I now need to build more muscle and I need to strength train. A completely new focus for me and a move into more structured training than I'm used to. I've spent years documenting my weight loss and walking to run in progress. I am now at a new stage or crossroads in my progression where simply running to be a better runner is no longer enough. As I come to the end of 2023, it feels like I'm at a crossroads in my training. I could very easily just sit back and enjoy my newfound fitness freedom, run a few park runs a month, eat relatively healthy, and be happy with that. I'm probably at the point where the 1% of aggregation of marginal gains rule is at its most important. Relentless forward progress. Two days ago, my missus and my girls decided to put up the Christmas decorations. I decided it was time for a long run. Anything is better than putting up Christmas decorations. But as standard in December in the UK, it was very cold, only about three degrees and it was raining. I was being a wimp. I didn't fancy slipping and sliding over the trails near my house just to get out of the way of the decorations. So I thought of something better at the time. Wow. 
I've just realized I've forgotten my towel. So today's challenge is I'm gonna climb out to Zwift. I'm gonna see if I've got any improvements. I've lost a lot of weight since my last challenge. I've done it twice now in a PB attempt and I've also done it um, three times on top of that, so five in total, of which twice I had to call it because it was part of my four horsemen attempt. But the good news is I have lost some weight, so I now weigh, I don't know if you can see that, 101.4 kg. We're gonna put that in now, let's do that. I was happy with this first attempt as a practice run. Come on, come on, push. Yes! But I returned a couple of weeks later and I set my new and official PB time of 100 minutes and 33 seconds. Yeah, I wanted to get it under 100, but I didn't have it. I didn't do it, Scarly. Again, link is in the description. I didn't manage to get a sub 100 minute PB. But a PB is a PB as long as you put maximum effort into it. Then it's a real snapshot of where you are in that moment in your journey. Last week, I set myself a new running park run PB of 29 minutes and 59 seconds. I ran my first ever sub 30 minute park run just by one second. <laughs> In October, so only two months ago now, I set my new marathon PB of five hours and 41 minutes. I ran 100K in September. Uh, seven. In 21 hours and nine minutes, I ran 55K in the summer. Where is it there? In eight hours and 43 minutes. My official 10K PB earlier this year was one hour and four minutes. This year, I also discovered Zwift for the first time, started racing and achieved my first ever podium position in a Zwift race. But I'm completely done. I have nothing. The guy I'm racing has in excess of six watts per kg and I just don't have that to give. This was a massive benchmark and one I'm really proud of. This year, I overcame probably my biggest challenge and one that had been weighing on my mind since 2019. I ran the Yorkshire Three Peaks in eight hours and 18 minutes. Again, I did that this year. I don't have any major races planned for December, so I'm making this video now as a roundup and celebration of the things I have achieved this year. It's really important that you celebrate the things you have achieved this year. There'll be plenty of things that you would have done differently. However, even if you've just improved this year by 1%, that small marginal gain is a step forward, relentless forward progress. The biggest thing I'm most proud of is the fact that I've documented and shared all of these massive highs and lows on my channel. And the thing is, I'm not stopping now. I have some fantastic ideas and PBs that I want to achieve in 2024. I'll make a full New Year's resolution video for these exciting new targets in January when I make it. And another huge benchmark this year was crossing the 1,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. I passed 1,000 subscribers in September this year. It took me nearly three years to reach 1,000 subs. And then only two months later, almost exactly two months, I crossed the 2,000 subscriber mark. I doubled my subscriber count in two months. Unbelievable. This is a really big deal for me as these videos take days to make. I mean, there's at least 12 to 18 hours worth of editing in each video alone. So, and that doesn't include the actual filming and doing what I'm doing to camera now. So these videos take a lot of my time and effort to put into them. Probably 75% of the reason why I do these videos is as a uh, snapshot in time, a benchmark, a journal of how I'm getting on in my, in my development, in my progress, in my fitness. That's why I make these videos. But I do make these videos also to inspire other people because when I was starting out on this journey, there were no videos like this. Most of the videos I watched were of already super fit people talking about how they'd lost a couple of pounds for their summer run. And that for me was just so far from where I was, it felt like I was watching Martians for the first time. If you do see value in my videos, then please consider subscribing. It massively helps me out. Only about 65% of the people that watch my videos are currently subscribers. So if you're part of that 35%, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out. So you see hitting 2000 subscribers is a really big deal for me as it means 
means what I create on YouTube holds some real value and it's worth the effort. If sharing what it is that I'm doing instigates positive change and helps inspire others, then I'll keep making these videos and uploading them on a weekly basis. These are just some of my new personal bests. I wanted to share them in this video um, because I've achieved them this year. None of them are fast or extraordinary. All of them are 100% worth every drop of sweat and the occasional tear. And all of them are huge achievements for me. These achievements are me being personally better than I was a year previous and definitely personally better than I was three years prior. There was one last PB I wanted to smash before 2023 finished and that was Elp. To Zwift. I wanted to get a sub 100 minute climb up out to Zwift. So with my girls decorating the shit out of my house, I went to the garage and I started pedaling. We're at the start of the out. Starting to get hot now, so the jumper's coming off. Jumper is off. There's my ghost. Consistency is key here. Okay, let's get over the paint up. Okay, good start. Consistent, I don't want to go too hard too early. Let's get to that first corner. I'm not going to mention my ghost. My ghost is behind me. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, 21. Corner number 20. And I am significantly ahead of my TV ghost. Uh, it's so far behind, I can't even see it on the screen. Okay, we've just ticked over eight kilometers complete. We've got just under 10K left to go. Uh, let me increase the gears. Okay, this is corner 16. And we are smashing it up this climb. We're about four corners clear. 15 corners left to go. I haven't learned how to multitask on Zwift yet. Good thing is, there's been zero surging. Absolutely no surging at all. I've stayed fairly consistent. I've concentrated on the hill percentage. I've tried to keep my watts in the 200s. I've tried to push a bit harder on the lower percent climbs and then keep my RPMs as close to 90 on the steep bit. Okay, we're doing well. We're coming up to about the halfway point. Uh, 37 minutes. Now, I made a mistake on saying that my ghost, my PR ghost, I'm smashing what I am, but it's only my 90 day PR ghost. Here we go. And 157 minutes, 43 seconds. That PR ghost is my four Hawksman time, which I've got to be honest, I think I could beat running up it. Of course I'm smashing that. I have absolutely no idea where I am in regards to my actual PR. No idea. Corner 11. Oh. 10 corners to go. Come on. Come on, Ryan. Come on, Ryan. I just need to get that seat for five minutes. Just to give my bum a break. We're just coming up to 56 minutes. And this is the seventh corner. So, I think we're doing okay. We're just coming up to corner five. We're doing really well. Just coming up to corner two. Just over 82 minutes. I've got 18 minutes to get this done in under 100 minutes. Okay, one more corner left. I've got one kilometer left. One kilometer. That's all. That's nothing. This is the last corner. 
come on. I'd love to get sub 90, but I'm not going to. One minute to do 500 meters, not doable. Oh. 200 meters, come on. my time oh there it is 92 21 oh 92 21 that's nearly eight minutes seven minutes and 40 seconds nearly off of my oh, over seven minutes I can't remember what my PB was I think it was a hundred minutes and something that's a good Sunday workout. An hour and 44 minutes. All right, I'm gonna go and lie on the shower floor. Oh! Ah! 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 Thanks for watching this video. Please feel free to share your PBs from this year. Don't forget that a PB is you at your personal best. You don't need a medal or a certificate saying that you did it. This is a controversial point as there'll be someone that shouts it's not an official PB unless it was measured by some bloke called Keith. But I'm not that precious and this is my channel so please share away. Pushing the boundaries of what it is you can do will never be a waste of time and you don't need a bloke with a measuring wheel to tell you that you have achieved something special. If you feel it, you feel it. I hope 2023 was a year that you look back on fondly and I hope there were things that you can say you achieved that made a difference. I'll be back next week with another video and I will make a New Year's resolution video outlining all of my new and exciting targets for 2024. Some of them will be absolutely unbalanced, 100% obsessive and dare I say, slightly unhinged. Merry Christmas. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh.